All right, let's begin. No, she'll be back. She said she'll be back. <clears throat> All right, let's start and uh, <clears throat> uh, let's bow for a word of prayer. Manalangin muna tayo para magsimula tayo. Let us pray. All right, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for your care for us. We thank you for your concern for us, your love for us, demonstrated by Christ on the cross when he died for our sins and written down uh, forever in our Bibles, Lord. And we thank you for the word of God. <clears throat> we, allow, we pray that we would allow the word of God to dwell in our hearts, Lord. And we pray that we would take heed to these things and that it would affect our lives, <clears throat> that we may bring honor and glory to you and please you in all things. And uh, we pray these things because of Jesus Christ. And so we ask for these things in his name. Amen. And amen. All right, Deuteronomy chapter number 8. So, nag-aaraw tayo ng book of Deuteronomy. This is the fifth book of Moses. Nahalala natin yung five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And basically, <clears throat> uh, we find ourselves uh, on the plains of Moab. So, nandun yung second generation of the children of Israel. <clears throat> A majority of the first generation have died, except for the 20-year-olds in Pababa. So kung ano siya, 20 na siya, makalipas ng 40 years, 70 years old na siya. So, 70 years old, hindi pa nakuha ang lupa, pero bibigay ng Diyos yung lupa sa kanila. And so that generation is swiftly passing. And now, Moses is reviewing everything. And he starts in Genesis. He explains the beginning of all things. Tapos pagdating sa Genesis 12, yung kasaysayan ng buong mundo ay dinagay niya sa kasaysayan ng isang family, the family of Abraham. Tapos in Espanya, yung family of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Tapos pangaalipin ng Egypt sa Israel, that would be Exodus. Tapos nung nilabas ng Diyos sa pangaalipin ng Egypt, yan ang uh, simula ng pagbigay ng Diyos ng batas, that would be Leviticus, Exodus, Leviticus. Batas patungkol sa pagsamba sa Diyos, sa mga pari, and offerings, and feasts, that would be Leviticus. Tapos, yung kasaysayan nila na mag-travel mula sa Mount Sinai or Horeb, papunta sa Kainaan, pero sila ay nag sa Panginoon dahil hindi nila sinakop yung Kainaan na dapat nilang sakupin na takot sila sa mga higante at naniwala sila sa evil report. So, pag-alaga, sinumpa sila ng Diyos dahil sa kawalan ng paniniwala nila sa Diyos. Sinumpa sila ng Diyos na sila'y pag-alagala for 40 years. At lahat yung kasaysayan na yan nasa Book of Numbers na pinag natin. We saw the Book of Numbers before. And now, we're in the plain of Moab, getting ready to take over Canaan, finally after 40 years, na sila ay nag-repent at sila ay binigyan ng tagumpay ng Diyos na sasakot na sila sa Canaan. And Moses is now giving them the reason and the purpose kung ano ang gusto ng Diyos sa kanila para pagsakop nila sa Canaan ay maging magtag- matagumpay sila na mamamahala ng Israel, ng lupang Israel. And so we are now in Genesis chapter 8. So natuklasan natin na yung book of Deuteronomy ay nakabahagi sa tatlong bahagi yan. So may introduction. Merong word of the Lord, yung pinakamahabang section, tapos merong conclusion, itong book of Deuteronomy. Isa itong malaking sermon ni Moses. You could say this is a, a mosaic sermon. And he's just preaching to them and declaring to them the word of God. Na kung sila ay mag observe ng salita ng Diyos at itatago nila ang salita ng Diyos sa kanilang puso, at isa sa buhay nila yung salita ng Diyos na narinig nila. Sila ay gagantimpilaan ng Diyos ng blessings. 
Ngunit kung tatalikuran nila ang salita ng Diyos at kakalimutan nila ang Diyos, ay madadat na nila yung sumpa ng Diyos. God will curse them for not hiding His word in their heart, for not observing or keeping His words, and for forgetting the Lord, not remembering Him. And this is what Deuteronomy is all about. So, makikita natin ito sa book of Deuteronomy talaga na dapat yung word of God tinatago sa heart. Tapos, isinasabuhay na nalagay sa ulo at naapektuhan ng kamay at paa. Hindi lang heart, head, hands, and feet. <clears throat> and so, the word of God should have influenced them. And this is what, what the whole book of Deuteronomy is about. Moses preparing the second generation to take over Canaan <clears throat> and uh, warning them, if you obey the word and you hide it in your heart and you do the word of God, God will bless. If you neglect the word and it's not in the heart and you forget the Lord, you will be cursed. And so <clears throat> God gave them multiple choice. <laughs> And is that really a multiple choice? What's the choice? Life or death? <laughs> Blessings or cursings? All right? That's really not a choice. So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Ngayon, uh, i-re-review ni Moses yung mga kapalpakan ng Israel bilang parte ng kanyang warning. So Moses has to review some of the failures of Israel as part of his warning. So Israel, you have a record. So what's your past record? Let's look at your record. Let's look at your report card. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you failed at Mount Sinai to keep the Ten Commandments as you were worshiping the calf. Uh, at Tabra, you were complaining. Uh, so then the Lord sent fire down and burnt some of the tribes that were on the outside of the tabernacle. And at Kadesh Barnea, you believed the false evil report from the ten spies instead of the good spies. So what grade do we give Israel? Huh? Palahol, no? F, F, F. It's fail, fail, fail. That's the history of Israel. And now they're going to go into Canaan. And now Moses is saying, okay, here's a new test. How do you think Israel will do? Hmm? Failed pa rin. Okay? So, now we know that. Pero yung testimony ng Israel, testimony rin natin as Christians. We're the same way. We are the exact same way. The Lord tells us what to do. He has given us His word. But do we obey His word? Do we observe? Do we keep it? Well, Maybe sometimes, yes, sometimes no. And we learn that partial obedience is disobedience. So, but every time Israel fails, the Lord is faithful. And He comes around and He helps them. Every single time, in every day, every generation. So the Lord is faithful and just. To forgive us our sins if we confess our sins against Him. So, maasahan natin ang tulong ng Panginoon. Gaya ng Israel, naasahan nila ang tulong ng Diyos. Bagamat sila ay failure, tumulong pa rin ang Diyos sa kanila. Ganon din tayo bilang Kristiyano. Lahat tayo, meron tayong mga experiences na mararanasan sa buhay. Pero, ang blessing natin, kung kilala natin si Jesus Christ bilang tagapagligtas, hindi siya mag-fail sa atin ever. And God will always come around to help and strengthen us and bring us along. Amen? All right. So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. So lessons from history. Lessons from history. Deuteronomy 8.1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. That's a key word. Observe. Observe. Parte ng salitang observe ay proprotektahan mo yung salita ng Diyos at gagampanan mo yun. That's, yun ang ingredients ng observe. So when the Bible says observe, it means for you to protect and keep His word and it means for you to obey His word and do His word. Alright, so there's, 
The word observe encompasses those two ideas. And we don't just observe something by watching. We observe something by keeping it and doing it. Okay? So we must observe the commandments of the Lord which I command thee this day. That ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Verse 2. And thou shalt remember. That's important. Remember. So I guess, you know, one of the reasons why New Year is so important is be, and Thanksgiving and Christmas is we remember the things that God has done. Diba? And so, pwede bang makalimutan natin ang mga gawa ng Diyos? Pwede ba nating makalimutan? Yes. So, isang mahalagang gawain yung mag-recollect tayo. And when we come to church, we're challenged to remember the Lord. Remember Him in your struggles, in your situation. Don't forget the Lord. Kaya huwag kayong ma-defeat sa mga pagsubok dahil nagpapadala ang Diyos ng paalaala palagi sa Kanyang salita, sa kapangangaran ng salita, sa pagtuturo ng salita ng Diyos. We remember the words of the Lord. Verse 2, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart. That's important. Bakit? Why does God bring trouble our way or trials or testings? It's to prove, to humble, and to know what is in thine heart. So what is in your heart? Anong nasa puso ninyo? What is that that's there? Well, in the case sa Exodus, in the case of Pharaoh, Pharaoh had pride in his heart. Kaya pinatigas ng Diyos yung nasa loob ng puso ni Pharaoh. He had pride. What about Joshua? Ito ha, wala pa tayo sa Joshua. Pagdating natin sa Joshua chapter 1, doon natin madediscover yung faith na nasa puso ni Joshua. Joshua had faith in his heart. Kaya, nung nagpadala ang Diyos ng pagsubok sa kanya, lumakas yung kanyang faith. Naging masigla siya sa faith. Nung nagpadala ng pagsubok ang Diyos kay Pharaoh, tumigas yung kanyang heart sa kanyang pride. Kasi kung ano yung laman ng heart, yun ang patitigasin ng Diyos. That is a theology, a uh, heartology. <laughs> Kung gusto mo mag-aral ng theme sa Bible or topic, study the heart. That is the, the central theme ng Deuteronomy. The word of God in your heart. Tapos yung secondary, the word of God in your mind. The word of God in your action. Those are the sector sharing secondary theme. Pero yung theme talaga ng heart, Lumalabas sa book of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> no. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. So, lahat ng experiences natin na nangyayari sa atin, meron tayong two choices. You have two choices. Will you follow the word of God? Will you respond in a way that is pleasing according to the word of God? Or will you respond in the flesh? Hulaan niyo ang mas, mas natural sa dalawa. Flesh. <laughs> It's easy to respond in the flesh. It's harder to respond according to the principles of the Word of God. Pero, we are challenged here to examine our heart and to prepare. So, kailangan maghanda na kayo. Ha? 2024 na. I hope nag-take time kayo na maghanda para Sabihin niyo pagdating ng bad news, how will I respond? Now, isang libo ang bad news na pwedeng dumaan sa atin. Mga isa o dalawa lang good news. <laughs> so, how are you prepared in your heart to reply to the troubles that God sends? And God sends us to humble us, to prove us, and to know what is in thine heart. Verse 
And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee known. Know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So this is a significant verse because who quotes this verse in the New Testament? Jesus quotes this very passage. So we can say Jesus read the book of Deuteronomy. And he took the, the words and applied it in his hour of temptation. So if you want to be a, a good disciple of the Lord, hide the word of God in your heart. Para pagdating ng testing or trial, meron kang pwedeng sabihin sa testing and trial na yon galing sa salita ng Diyos. Ang problema, we're running on empty hearts that don't have the word of God and then the troubles come and what are we drawing from? We got nothing. We didn't hide the word of God in our hearts. We don't know the word of God. Kaya palpak talaga. Majority of Christians do not study the Bible. Do not read the Bible. Do not hide God's word in our heart. Therefore, we sin against the Lord and then we respond in the flesh because the heart is empty of the word of God. So let's change. Change. Amen? <laughs> change that poor, bad, sinful behavior. Lord, help me to learn the word of God. Help me to understand the word. Help me to study the word. Help me to hide the word of God in my heart so that when troubles come, I can say, oh, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. I can say, uh, and the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And you have the word of God in your heart. So, mahalaga ba? Every day, should we be in the word of God? Yes. Dapat mas lalo tayo sa word of God pagdating ng troubles. Ang problema, blank yung heart natin. Wala. And we don't, we don't survive the trouble. We go under and fail because of this. But look, notice what it says here. Man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So, <clears throat> nung sinabi ni Jesus, God, sa New Testament, the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, doon natin nakikita, Jehovah, sa lumang tipan, is Theos, God, in the New Testament. And they are perfect uh, rendering of the word of God. So the word Lord could be translated God, and God could be translated Lord. Either way, you got the Hebrew, you got the Greek, you got the English, We're talking about the Lord. We're talking about Jehovah. We're talking about God. Okay? A man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How did the children of Israel live in the wilderness for 40 years? What did God supply? Manna and quail and water from a rock. Would the manna come? Would the quail come? Would the water gush out of the rock if God didn't say so? No. Kailangan magsalita ang Diyos before na ma-provide yung mana and quail and water and pillar of cloud and pillar of fire at night. The answers to prayer, God has to speak in order to supply. So man doesn't live by bread alone. We live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Doth man live? So, is it different today? Do you think that we can survive without the word of the Lord? Huh? Imagine living life without the Bible. Katakot-takot? See, Brother Bill, marami namang tao hindi nagbabasa ng Bible, pero parang okay sila. Okay sila kasi mangmang sila sa kondisyon ng kaluluwa nila hindi nila alam ang hatol ng Diyos sa dulong wakas. 
So the reason why the word of God is so important is we live by the word. And this is one of the reasons why we know that the Bible is God's word today. Because the Lord has inspired and preserved his word even from Moses' time till today. So is this the inspired, perfect word of God? Absolutely, yes. How do we know it? Because this is an English translation of the Hebrew that God inspired and preserved. So do we have the word of God today? Or maybe it's lost somewhere in the sands of Egypt. I say that. Do you know that there are 5,000, about 5,800 Greek manuscripts attesting to the New Testament? E paano kung nakahanap pa sila ng mas marami pang kasulatan sa hinaharap natin? This is only 2024. What if they find more manuscripts in the sands of Egypt in the future? As I have no doubt, they'll probably find more. Would we change the word of God based upon what they find? We can't. Why? Because what has been established and written and believed cannot be changed. Even in the light of a discovery of new discoveries. So anyway... In the future, I will teach on the King James Bible and the Hebrew Masoretic Text and the Greek Textus Receptus. Anong galing yung mga yan? At kung bakit humahawak tayo sa King James. At sa Tagalog, mayroong magandang salin pero hindi 100% mahusay. It still needs to be perfected and revised and, and, and purified. Pero sana dumating ang time na magkaroon yung Tagalog ng Tagalog na salin na purified, perfected, mature. But anyway, until then, we have the King James at least. Or we could learn Hebrew and Greek, amen? amen. Which we tried. We tried. <clears throat> we might review it again sometime in the future. All right, verse number four. Verse number four. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee. This is a miracle of God. Na yung mga damit nila, lumang-luma, hindi pa nasisira. God preserved them. Forty years. Preserve them. Their clothes. Neither did thy foot swell for these forty years. Neither shall also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Hindi sila pinabayaan. Kung kailangan paluin sila, pinalo sila. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. So may layunin ng Diyos, dalin ko kayo sa good land. And a land of brooks of water, of fountains of depths, of spring out of the valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees, pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey. Verse 9. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land which the stones are iron. Whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Wow, may mga ginto na nandun sa, nakaukit sa mga, mga bundok nila. Or mga tanso. O yung mga silver and precious metals. And even common metals like brass. When thou hast eaten, art full, thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good of the land which he hath given thee. Beware, lest thou forget not the Lord thy God. Beware. So warning. Sa kasaganahan, maaaring makalimutan ang Diyos. Beware, lest thou forget the Lord thy God. So may temptation ang Israel na kalimutan ang Diyos. In not keeping his commandments, his judgments and statutes which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and gold is multiplied, thou hast, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, that's pride, and forget the Lord thy God, that's not remembering him, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein there are fiery serpents and scorpions and drought 
where there was no water, who brought thee forth uh, the water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with man, and thy fathers knew not that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee, to do thee good at thy latter end. So, <clears throat> pwede pa lang yung heart natin malift up sa pride. So, alibaba, Christian tayo. <clears throat> Nagampanan natin ang layunin ng Diyos. O, nalampasan natin yung lesson 1, lesson 2, lesson 3. Pwede tayong magsabi sa, sa heart natin, Wow, magaling naman akong kristyano. Okay naman ako. Tingnan mo yung mga accomplish ko, tingnan mo yung mga nagawa ko. Hmm? That's possible, that can happen. Tapos, imbis na mag-depend tayo sa Panginoon, nagde-depend na tayo sa sarili nating lakas nakalimutan natin ang Diyos. And that, that, that can happen to us. So, here's a warning. A warning. Verse 17. And thou shalt say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. Kaya naman ako na-bless. Naghirap naman ako eh. Pinagsikapan ko ito. Ako ang gumawa nito. Oh, yeah? Okay. So, anong mangyayari sa atin ngayon? Oh, iahambol tayo ng Diyos. O, sa susunod, gagawa ulit tayo, pero walang results. What happened? Hmm. It could be that God is humbling us. Para mabalik tayo sa, ayo nga, nagde-depend lang pala tayo sa Panginoon. We rely upon Him. So, we mes- make sure, examine our heart. Heart. Napansin ba ninyo, heart? Puros heart yung Deuteronomy? Yeah? I wonder, maybe you can Google this, you know, I don't know. How many times the word heart is found in the book of Deuteronomy? Huh? I have a software for that. <laughs> Tingnan natin. Okay, heart. Hmm. Galing ng technology ngayon. 21 times sa book of Deuteronomy yung word heart. 5 times sa Genesis, 20 sa Exodus, 3 sa Numbers, 21 sa Deuteronomy. Thank you, Google. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Guni-guni. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. So again, uh, uh, it's important. And I will say this again. Kaya mahalaga ang church. Kasi pinapaalala sa atin sa preaching ng salita ng Diyos, yung mga alam na natin. Rene-review lang yan. Pero kailangan bang i-review? Let me, let me show you an observation. Ha? Pansinin niyo ito. Moses was reviewing the history of Genesis hanggang Deuteronomy to the second generation Israel. Yung church natin, hindi lang sa atin. Merong mga second generation na lumalaki sa church natin. That would be Thea, Jacobed, uh, Tabita, that would be, yes, kasama dyan si uh, young lady. I forgot your name. Pero nandyan. Yes, Belmar, yes. And there's a uh, lot ng mga young people, yung mga nandito sa kabila, ha? kailangan nilang marinig yung mga alam na natin. Yung mga natutunan natin sa salita ng Diyos, they need to hear it. Why? So that maybe the Holy Spirit of God could take the word and drive it in their hearts. And then they will grow up to become strong Christians. Hindi yung kapalpakan natin ang napulot nila kundi yung mga tagumpay na binigay sa atin ng Diyos ang mapulot nila. Para pagdating ng time na sila ang mag-church, wala na tayo, mas masigasig ang church nila kesa sa church natin. Pero kung hindi tayo magtuturo ng salita ng Diyos at magre-review, kung akala natin na master na natin ng Genesis, na master na natin ng uh, Exodus, kung sa palagay natin, hindi na tayo magpipreach sa Genesis and teach Do you think that would be healthy for the second generation? Hmm? Do you think it's healthy for the first generation? No. We have a responsibility 
to have church so that we can hear the preaching and teaching of the word of God that we need for us and for the second generation. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. Kaya huwag kayong mainip pag nakarinig kayo ng gospel preaching. Ay nako, gospel na naman. Narinig ko na ito, alam ko na yan. No. Every time you hear a gospel message, I want you to know something. God is trying to work at someone's heart and you should be thankful to God that you can hear the good news again and be reminded, oh yeah, Jesus died for me. That's why I know I'm saved. And what thankfulness should flow from our hearts is so easy to say, Jesus died for me. Napaka-easy sabihin. Pero you put yourself on the foot of the cross and you see Mary weeping for her son. And you see the Son of God being forsaken by God. It's not the easiest. This is the hardest thing in human history. But lest we forget. So verse, uh, uh, verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, for he that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou shalt do all at, at all, forget the Lord thy God, walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. So tingnan mo yung apeksyon ng tao. Ha? Pwede pala natin ibigay yung puso natin sa iba. Imbis na sa Panginoon. We could be serving and worshiping other things other than God. And I tell you, that is exactly where a whole lot of Christians are. Kaya yung nagagawa ng iba, magsimba. Yung, yung iba, hindi magagawa. Alam mo ang problema? Hindi schedule. Puso ang problema. That is a heart problem. Everything is a heart problem. Everything. Eh, hindi ko mabasa ang salita ng Diyos. May heart problem ka. Hindi ako makapag-pray ng kahit na 15 minutes lang, 10 minutes, nahihirapan ako mag-pray. You have a heart problem. Ay, hindi ako makapag-church. Yung schedule ko. No, no, no. You have a heart problem. So, you get your heart right with God and things will change. Things will, do you believe that God will help you change? Yes. Eh, so kung walang change, di walang prayer, walang pagsusumikap, walang, pag, walang surrender, you won't change until you surrender your heart to God. Unahin mo muna yung heart bago yung palda. Start with the heart before the skirt. You start with the heart <clears throat> before the ceremony, <laughs> the rituals. Uh, heart. <clears throat> so verse 19, all right, verse 20, verse 20, As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before you, your face, so shall ye perish. Tingnan mo, ang Diyos ang nagtatayo ng mga nations, siya ang nagbabagsak ng mga nations. So imagine natin, ha? Ano yung nation na unang sumakop sa Israel? Assyria. Tapos sinakop sila ng Babylonia. Tapos sinakop ng Babylonia, ng Greece ang Babylonia. Tapos sinakop ng Roma ang Greece. Eh ngayon, ano yung mga nations ngayon na tanyag? Meron ba silang pagbagsak? Yes. Do you think we are in the precipice of success or failure as a nation? price ng bigas. Sibuyas, parang ginto na eh. Yung ano, mga carrots, nako. Carrots lang ha. <laughs> magtanim kaya ka, magtanim kaya ka ng carrots. <laughs> Tapos maging carrot Baptist church tayo. Magsupply tayo ng mga carrots sa buong daigdig. Yung mga maging bilyonaryo tayo. <laughs> I'm just saying. Do you believe that where our nation is on the rise or is on the decline? I'm, I'm not being a doom and gloom guy, but who destroys nations and who establishes nations? God does that. That's the Lord. So bakit niya i-destroy ang nation? 
pag yung nation nakalimot na sa Panginoon. So before your face shall ye perish because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. So if you want to be a successful disciple, you have to be an obedient disciple. So kung hindi ka obedient sa Panginoon, wag mong asahan na ibibless ka ng Panginoon. It'll never happen. Maybe you will have some victories by the grace of God. And that's the mercy of God. But the blessing that God wants to give you, He cannot give you if you are disobedient to the Lord. It cannot happen. And it will not happen. Deuteronomy 9. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan. So, ako, itong gagawin ninyo. Lampasan ninyo yung Jordan River. Pasok kayo sa Kainan. This day, to go in and possess the nations greater and mightier than thyself. Tandaan mo, yung mga pagsubok mo, mas higit pa sa'yo. Pero makukuha mo rin yun, malalampasan mo yan. Yung mga nations na napakatanyag na mas malakas pa kaysa sa'yo, magagawa mo pa rin yan. Cities great and fenced up to heaven. Sa kataas-taas ng mga pader ng uh, Jericho, for example. A great people, tall, matatangkad. Children of Anakims, mga gigante yan. Whom thou knowest and whom thou hast heard say, Who shall stand before the children of Anak? May kasabihan nga. Sino ang lalaban sa mga higanting mga anak ni Anak? Galing ng Tagalog. No? Anak ni Anak. <clears throat> Verse 3, Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is He which goeth over before thee. So God goes before thee. Amen. As a consuming fire, he shall destroy them and he shall bring them down before thy face so thou shalt drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord had said unto thee, Speak not thou in thine heart after the Lord thy God has cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. Kaya pala ako binigyan ng land ng Panginoon kasi napakahusay ko. And God is... God is opening our heart and showing us the contents of our heart. Alam ng Diyos yung laman ng tao, heart ng tao. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before. Kaya naman pala sila palpak kasi they are wicked. Kaya sila sinumpaan ng Diyos, they are wicked. Hindi dahil napakagaling natin, kundi dahil napakabulok nila. <laughs> so that's the reality of it. So, we don't lift up our hearts. We praise the Lord, thank Him for our victory. We don't think we're something. We're nothing. Verse 5, Not for thy righteous, but for the uprightness of thine heart. <clears throat> dost thou go to possess their land? But for the wickedness of these nations, doth thy God doth drive them out from before thee, that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, So what word did God give Abraham? Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 15, and a couple other times. And same with uh, Isaac and Jacob. God rehearsed the Abrahamic covenant with them. Understand therefore that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness. For, a, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Uh, matigas kasi yung leeg ninyo. <laughs> Sabi nila, matigas ang ulo. Sabi ng Lord, matigas na lieg. So, nakaranas na ba kayo ng stiff neck? Hmm? <laughs> Nakatulog ba kayo sa isang ano, maling posisyon? Tapos pag-ising ninyo? <laughs> ang sakit. Alright? That's what God thinks of a rebellious people. Stiff neck? Nako, huwag tayong maging stiff neck. Pangit yon stiff neck Baptist Church. Nako, Pangit yung pangalan na yun, stiff neck. Pero baka totoo naman, di ba? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> stiff neck? <laughs> Foot out of joint? Hmm? Broken tooth? <laughs> Verse 7. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou depart out of the land of Egypt until you come into this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord. So, i-review ni Moses yung mga failure nila. Paalala lang ha. Naalala ba ninyo sa Horeb, verse 8? <laughs> also in Horeb, ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, 
Even the tables of the covenant of the Lord made you with you. Then I abode in the mount 40 days, 40 nights. Neither did I eat bread nor drink water. Nag fasting talaga siya. Sinustay naman siya ng Panginoon. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. And on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake unto you in the mount of the midst of the fire in the days of the assembly. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights. The Lord gave me the two tables of stones, even the tables of the covenant, verse 12. Chapter 9, 12. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, for thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Ano yung ginawa nila? Naalala nyo yung pagsamba ni Aaron, gumawa siya ng diyos golden calf, si Apis, the bull god of Egypt. They corrupted themselves and they are quickly turned aside out of the way which I command them. And they have made them a molten image. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone, that I may destroy them, blot them their name from under heaven. Tanggalin ko niyo pangalan niyo sa book of life. And I will make thee a great nation. Ulitin ko na lang sa'yo, Moses. Kalimutan ko na yung Abrahamic covenant. Magkaroon na lang tayo ng Mosaic covenant. I will start again. Yun ang ginawa niya kay Noah. Naalala niyo, Adam, Noah. He wiped out Adam. He started with Noah. Oh, ano nangyari? Same pa rin. So I turned and came down from the mountain, mount burnt with fire, and the tables of covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, ye have sinned against the Lord your God, made you a molten calf. He turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord hath commanded you. Verse 17. And I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. And I neither did eat nor drink water because all of, you, of all your sins which ye have sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wrought against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened to me at that time also. So nag intervene si Moses, Lord. Alam ko, gusto mo na silang tanggalin, alisin, patayin. Huwag mo na, Lord. So there were times na si Lord, mainit yung ulo niya sa Israel. Sabi ni Moses, huwag mo na, Lord. Tapos there were times na si Moses naman, mainit yung ulo niya. Pero yung Lord naman, no, Moses, huwag mo na. So they, they held themselves back. Verse 19 Uh, now verse 20 and the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him and I, I prayed for Aaron also the same time so larawan si Moses type of Christ siya ganun talaga no? patagal na sana tayong sinumpa ng Diyos pinatay, dinala sa dagat-dagat ang apoy pero si Jesus Christ ang tumatayong sasardote natin at sabi niya wag muna namatay ako para sa kanya nagsisi siya, tinanggap niya ako kaya hindi tayo tinanggal sa aklat ng buhay. Hindi tayo tinaboy sa isang dagat-dagat ng apoy. And it was because of Jesus' intervention. So Moses is like Jesus here. Verse 21, I took your sin, the calf that you made, and burned it with fire, and stamped it in the very ground, very small, even until it was small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof in the brook, and that descended out of the mount. Verse 22, ito naman, at tabira. Okay, ibang location. So yung una, Horeb. Ngayon, Tabera. Tabera will be Numbers chapter 11. Wala tayong time para i-review. Pero doon sa Tabera, naalala ninyo, pinakita ng Diyos kung paano sila mag, sa kampo. Ito yung mga Levites. Ito yung mga tribo. North, South, East, West. Nasa gitna yung Tabernacle. Sa Tabera, nag-complain yung mga, yung mga Israelites. Moses, dinala mo ba kami dito para patayin? Nasaan yung tubig namin? Nauhaw na kami. Ha? walang pasasalamat sa Diyos so anong ginawa ng Diyos nagpadala siya ng apoy sinunog niya yung mga nakatira sa malayo sa tabernacle <clears throat> so numbers 11 you can read that at Tabra at Masa and Kir- Kirbothat Hava yan vocabulary yan ha? sa final hindi biro lang <clears throat> you provoke the Lord to wrath Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea. Ano naman nangyari sa Kadesh Barnea? Yan yung hindi sila nakinig sa spies, sa two, sa kay Joshua, kay Caleb. Saying, go up, possess the land which I give you. Then ye rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Ye believed him not, 
nor hearken to his voice. So verse 24, you have rebellious, you have been rebellious against the Lord from the day till I knew you. So I'm warning you because I know you're rebellious. <laughs> Thus I fell down before the Lord 40 days, 40 nights as I fell down the first because the Lord has said he would destroy you. I pray therefore unto the Lord and the Lord's and said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people, thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, but nor to their sin. Lest the land which thou hast uh, brought us, us out say, Because the Lord was not able to bring, uh, not able to bring them into the land which He promised them, because He hated them, He brought them out to slay them in the wilderness. Yet they are uh, Thy people and Thine inheritance, which Thou brought us out by the mighty power and Thine outstretched arm. So there's uh, Moses's intervention, and <clears throat> so we find this Moses rehearsing their failures to motivate them to do better, and so. We find all this as Christian. So bilang Kristiano, asahan natin yung 2024 ay may mga parating na mga pagsubok na katakot-takot at mas malakas pa kesa sa atin at mas, mas higante pa kesa sa atin. Pero huwag natin kalimutan, the Lord is with us and His Word is with us. And ang responsibility natin, ano, Be obedient, observe, keep, and obey the word of the Lord. Saan? In your heart. In your heart. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the reminder of the past failures and victories of Israel. And we thank you for the word of God that's rich. Help us to hide the word of God in our hearts. Help us to empty our hearts of sin and fill it with the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God that we may have victory in our lives for the testings and trials that you have prepared for us in a new year. We ask your hand of blessing upon us because of Jesus Christ. We ask it in his name. Amen and amen.